Just watch the miniseries Carlos about the terrorist Carlos the Jackal. And uh, I s just started writing in my journal about all the parallels between myself and Carlos the Jackal because I remember when I was kicked out of Young Israel Century City in 2001, people were upset about my writings on Dennis Prager. They thought that I, you know, betrayed Dennis Prager and betrayed his privacy and uh, and I was accused by several members of the congregation of being an internet terrorist and never been able to get that phrase out of my head. Like, I always thought I was the good guy, like fighting on behalf of truth and justice and fighting on behalf of, you know, little people who are being squashed by the powerful people and, you know, telling important stories and helping people tell their stories, you know, via my blogs. So to be called an internet terrorist, a a little bit like that Michael Douglas character in Falling Down, who uh, is walking across West Los Angeles, and uh, and suddenly near the end of the the movie, he says, "I'm the bad guy." Like he always thought that he was the victim. So I was just struck by the similarity of my story with that of the terrorist Carlos the Jackal. Like we both come from the Southern Hemisphere. He's from Venezuela. I'm from Australia, uh, and like we're both seized by this conviction that we're going to do something great, that we'll have a world transforming career. In early adulthood, we seize on to a, a world transforming career for ourselves. We both like believe in Marxism. Uh, I left Marxism after just like flirting with it for a couple of years, but uh, Carlos like killed for Marxism. Then I adopted Judaism. I saw ethical monotheism as embodied by Judaism as as uh, my world transforming career. So we, even in the planning stages, early stages, as we're just getting started on our careers, perceptive people around us see that we're more out for glory for ourselves and for the cause that we espouse. We strike with audacity and like kind of feel like we've set the world on its on its hinges. It's like you know, shaking things up. And we get big headlines for our strikes of terror. And then we crave the attention and the, that we get from our audacity and we seek more attention. We get drunk on the attention of pretty young women and we just can't get enough pretty young women. We're constantly on the move. We have no home. We Imagine ourselves the equal of the great people that we strike against because we can threaten them. We enjoy it when great powers, great people bid for our services. We feel on top of the world and that we're, we can't be stopped. Then uh, that's just like during the high points of our bipolar cycle, but then we're always conscious of how hard it is to have had the success we've had and how once you strike unexpectedly one time you can never repeat that again and all our work becomes more and more difficult as people get wise to us and how we work and they start taking better precautionary and protective measures. So for me as a journalist the more work I do the more aware people are of my interviewing techniques for instance. Uh, we start sensing a slippage from our place at the top. And then we find that the price of our notoriety steadily outstrips its benefits. We find ourselves kicked out of home after home. So Carlos the Jackal was kicked out of, in this mini-series anyways, kicked out of France, England, uh, Bulgaria, uh, Syria, uh, Baghdad, uh, Libya. And I was kicked out of, like, for a while, Asia Torah, and Young Israel Century City, and B'nai David Judea, and Beth Jacob, and Chabad Beis Bazal El, to various synagogues. And then, as we pass into middle age, we suddenly find nobody wants our services anymore, and that we're not all Quran. We don't have job skills that can translate to the new age. So, I made a living from blogging from 1997 to about 2007. But uh, after that, like the information wants to be free, and uh, 
it was just harder and harder to make a living blogging anymore. My, my skills weren't able to keep up with the income that I need to survive. So we're seized with the conviction that this won't end well. And uh, we bring misery to those around us. We become irrelevant. This is very hard on our vanity. We rage when others have contempt for us and treat us as unimportant. And we long for the days when we were big shots. And we grow fat and our testicles hurt. 